Activate defenses. Activate defenses. Commence countdown. Ten minutes and counting. Nine minutes and counting. Eight minutes and counting. Seven minutes and counting. Six minutes and counting. Five minutes and counting. Four minutes and counting. Three minutes and counting. Two minutes and counting. One minute and counting. Forty seconds and counting. Hello, hello everybody. Welcome, welcome one and all, and uh, welcome to the Bond Experience Happy Hour. However, a little bit more specifically, the Bond Style Happy Hour. I hope everybody's doing well. Let's see who we have in the chat room. Oh my gosh, it's none other than Joe Darlington being James Bond. We've got Martin, we've got Connor, we've got Buffin, we've got, we've got Edie. We've got Michael Poplowski and Nicholas and all these people. And I'm going way too fast to see any comments because a lot of people are joining. Clearly, clearly some of you, like Tim Hans, needed um, needed a happy hour. Now, is it Wednesday? Is it midweek? It's not. Is it Friday? Have you had a long, hard week? Probably not. But it doesn't matter. So why are we here? Well, here's the premise. You know, I thought to myself... Um, I would love the opportunity to get with friends, friends like you, friends like we're going to be inviting on in just a few moments to talk about Bond style. There's kind of nothing I'd rather do in a very relaxed atmosphere. It's a little bit easier on the cerebral cortex than talking about a Bond book, for example. Um, I don't know how much NOC 22 is, but someone just gave me NOC 22. And I'm glad you got an Omega. That's fantastic. But here's the thing. We're going to have these from time to time, and we're starting with no time to die, and we're going to walk backwards. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from no time to die to Dr. No and talk about the different styles, the different outfits, the accessories that Bond wears. We're going to debate them. We're going to discuss them. Do we own them? Do we want to own them? Do we keep them? Do we kill them? And all along, we're going to be having a nice drink. Now, I am fully kitted out, no time to die. I've got the watch, I've got the Bahamas. Um, let's pretend I've got the Tom Fords and the Sperry's on. And I am drinking what Bond slugged back, his second drink that he has when he meets Nomi, and that is the Johnny Walker Black. It's a nice digestive. I had enchiladas. And you made enchiladas for dinner tonight. Not on theme at all, but that doesn't matter. So just to remember, and somebody's asking a great question, Vlad, is it live? No, it's pre-recorded. I just assumed that you were going to ask it's live. Yes, these are always going to be live. They will never be pre-recorded. Um, and more importantly, Vlad, or may I call you Dracula, um, you will be invited into the discussion, all right? But I can't do this. I can't do this by myself. So good evening, Jason. From time to time, I'm going to be inviting different sartorial content creators and contributors and guests and maybe even a celebrity every now and then to the discussion. So we're talking about no time to die. Who was I going to invite? Well, I had to start with some individuals that I just felt really comfortable with. This individual I'm going to invite into the room, they call him the beer guy, but they also call him one of the most prolific contributors in the Bond community. You know him as Kyle. Kyle, welcome to the show. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for having me on. It's always nice to be back. By the way, I love that you were themed and you wore a Spectre turtleneck. <laughs> yes, I did. And a Skyfall watch. So I'm kind of uncovering all of the Daniel Craig bases tonight. I love that, though. You want to do that. Now, we will eventually do Spectre. So you may have to come back and wear the same outfit unless you have something different. Oh, I, I think I have more than one Bond outfit. I'm pretty yes. sure. Pretty now, sure. What, what are you drinking tonight? I've got... You ever try this? It's mm. uh, called Blackwell 007. It's very good. Nice. And you're going to drink it straight, I assume. Yeah, I'm, I'm just drinking it neat out of my uh, little Sean Connery uh, rocks glass here. Dude, so that is a significant pour, by the way. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I'm going to be talking to you for a while. So socially lubrication, is that's important. I'm not going to touch that because it's a family audience. Um, <laughs> Social totally, so, somebody yelled and went, Calvin. It flies out of the gutter. That's not Calvin. 
<laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Connor Bentley says, my fellow persuader. Good evening, Connor. Nicely done, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Well, Great listen, Kyle, this would, this would be great if it was just you and I, but we need we need more room in this pub. So there, there's a gentleman who actually relatively new um, to the, I would say, the Bond Sartorial world from a content standpoint. But one of the biggest crescendos, I would say, is Bond's apartment, also part of um, a rather uh, tenacious podcast but let me introduce him luke taggart from bond's apartment what's Welcome. going on everybody david kyle how are you luke sounding lovely Looking you as well right? you as well kyle with the best uh instagram hashtag of all time <laughs> but, but can you pronounce it <laughs> i forgot what i i forgot what it was already it's long it's even longer than mine which is yeah. long. it's yeah. it's actually longer than the train that they're on when she says it <laughs> yeah i think it was i think it was the new one yeah. is Kyle Barbo, also known as Easy Smiles, Expensive Watches, does a great Roger Moore. I think wow, that's the new one. On. Right? Now, Luke, besides Bond's Apartment, you do a podcast as well. Yes. Yes. Blown Instruments. Yeah. With uh, two gentlemen, Lorenzo from Omega Bond Watches and Jake from James Bond AU. Wow. So AU. that's been going on now for over a year, year and a half almost. By the way, fi they finally realized that that's not Calvin Dyson, that it's Kyle. So now you're getting a bunch of... There you go. Else. Good evening, Mr. Bond fans. Poor, that was good, too. Poor Vlad, by the way. You got to do it like this. Good evening, Mr. Bond fans. <laughs> Guy with the best that. camera. He's got the best camera in the business. Luke, what are you wearing tonight? I recognize it. I've got the Connolly Gabino on. And this is a uh, scotch and soda Henley. Uh, I, I opted for a gray, which you can't see. And then I'm drinking Peroni tonight. Yeah. Very nice. I only had about four of those with my lunch today. Yeah, very nice. Uh, you get them, for free. This at home. <laughs> get them for free. Get them for free. Get them for free. All right, gentlemen, um, who doesn't like a threesome? But uh, quite frankly, <laughs> we are going to need to invite somebody else because um, we need somebody that's going to add authenticity, credibility to this discussion. And who better, who better than the absolute, and I don't mean this by age, the grandfather of James Bond style himself, prolific, award-winning author, none other than Matt Spazer from Bond Suits. Matt, hey. welcome. Hey, there he is. Hey, hey guys. Hey, David, Kyle. Hey, Matt. Luke. Matt Great to be here with you guys. Yes, you indeed. Too. You too. Matt, it, it is so nice to have you on. And before we went live, um, I was trying to remember the last time that you went live on this show, and you said it was some sometime back in spring. That's too long of a hiatus. Might, it might have been then, yeah. What What have you been doing? I've been doing? I, I was, So lately I've been keeping up my blog, you know, bondsuits.com. I have been covering all of the No Time to Die outfits in great detail. And it's, it's been quite a journey. You know, I'm really getting to know these looks a lot better than I ever have before. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I've covered all of the tailored looks from the films. I have also, um, now I'm, I've been going through a lot of the other looks. Um, you know, I, this week I just published an article about the, the end peel sweater from the final act of the film. I think one of the, the most significant outfits of the film. All right, Matt, and, it, was, uh, it was actually a joke. When I said, what have you been doing? <laughs> Everybody knows you've been going gangbusters. You came out with a crazy. Book. You've been doing all of the outfits from this film as well. So, so much. I, I think you're going to have a certain opinion on these. And, and here's just a reminder to everybody out there. We want your opinions as well. Um, you could sit here. You could have a drink with all of us. And um, that would be fine. You could be just a spectator. But we want you to enjoy in the conversation. And guys, we're just going to get started. All right. So cheers to everybody out there. Welcome to the week. Welcome to the first inaugural version of this series. Mm. Bottoms up. Bottoms up. Kyle, that glass. Isn't that neat? Mm -hmm. And we are going to go right to the very first image. So here we go, <clears throat> gentlemen. All right. <laughs> so, I mean, we, we had to start out simple, but important. Um, obviously, we have Bond come out in a tuxedo. Now, Matt, we're going to start with you. Which okay. tuxedo is that? What do you think of it? So it's the same one that he wears in Cuba, in the Cuba scenes of the film. You know, and what makes this really special is it's, um, 
it's out of Daniel Craig's five gun barrel sequences. This is the only one where he wears black tie. You know, we mm. haven't seen James Bond in a gun barrel wearing, you know, his, his famous dinner jacket since the Brosnan films. Right. Yeah. And, you know, there's something about this. I'll just share my opinion. When I see this in a still frame like this, to me, it doesn't his outfit doesn't look quite as sleek as the other um, the other ones of these from the other Craig movies. Like when he wears a suit and it looks a little bit more streamlined. This looks a little like you see the knees, you see the kind yeah. of the thigh area. I, I don't know, Kyle, what do you think? I think that's just his posture, the way he's standing. It's not, He's not as, um, I, I don't want to use uh, an improper word, but he's not as erect as he is in Inspector. So I think why we're seeing his shoulders slope and his knees out a little bit is just the way he's standing. It's a great tuxedo. It looks wonderful in Cuba. Um, I'm not crazy about his gun barrel pose. Yeah. What about mm -hmm. you, Luke? Yeah, it's f for some reason, the way he's standing, that suit looks like it doesn't fit him. <laughs> you know, it just looks like really baggy. I mean, it, it, but the suit, I mean, like Matt said, the tux being from Cuba, I do, as the tuxedo itself, I do really like that one. Well, you yeah. know, it's not, it's not baggy. It's, it's quite the opposite. The problem is yeah. you're, you're, just, you're just seeing like bulges from, from fabric bunching in places because it's getting caught in like yeah. his on his thighs now david i remember one thing that you said when you when you got your first uh, no time to die suit so you, you spoke with the tailor tom ford didn't they, didn't they say that they made the trouser legs narrower for this film they did um they actually uh said that they uh tapered them a little bit more than usual so that's probably what we're seeing here and why it doesn't look quite as clean in this silhouette yeah yeah I, he I, needed to do that trick that I've seen you do getting out of the acid, Martin, David, when you take your your opposite foot and push the back of the the pant down with, you know what I mean? He needed to do, he needed to stop, do that, and then fire the gun. Nothing. That's just laziness. Nothing says better than than taking your dirty shoe and wiping it across your tuxedo leg. Exactly. And by the exactly. way, by the way, we have to move on because so far we've said um We've said bulges from Matt, erect from uh, Kyle. So the sensors are saying to move on. And now, <laughs> and now we're moving on to this particular outfit. Um, so you know what? We have to start with Luke because Luke, you're you're representing tonight. I hate it. I would never buy it. And I think if you have it, you're an idiot. <laughs> um, to be honest way, with you, he's there. He's from Blunt's Instruments. So there we go. That's right. That's right. If you expected anything else, then. Um, no, I mean, he, th this is one of those ones where he, um, you know, of course always looks fantastic, but, um, watching this and then the stills, cause I think these were some of the earliest, uh, you know, kind of leaked stills we had seen. He just, it looked incredible. Um, and then once I saw more actual footage, I was a little skeptical because of the, the, um, you know, how short. It is. Um, and now owning it, it is difficult. You know, you know, you definitely need the right shirt underneath. But, you know, once you work those things out, it I like it a lot. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I'll tell you, I obviously own each piece from here and the glasses, the sunglasses. Cause we have to talk about the accessories, too. I think these are hands down my favorite sunglasses in the film. And we will talk about all the accessories. But to me, for me, they oh. are just yeah. different enough. Damn it, we got a drink now. Um, they're yeah. different enough that they don't look like a typical Wayfair. They have a little bit more roundedness to it. They're absolutely beautiful. Of course, they're from Barton Carrera. I will say this. Um, I love the Anderson and Shepard linen short sleeve shirt. I will wear it a lot when it gets warm. Mm -hmm. I haven't really worn the, um, the jacket that much. And I received from the company, from Connolly, their, um, their suede version, their like almost off-white suede version. And yeah. I like it better than this linen cotton. But Kyle, what do, what do you think of the outfit? Does it, does it speak to you? Well, I, uh, I practice what I preach. I actually, I think my favorite thing about this particular outfit are the corduroys that he's wearing. And I ordered them on Monday. They will be here on Friday. So I'm pretty excited nice. for that. Um, and I love, I love these glasses. Mm -hmm. They just, they frame Daniel Craig's face really well. They look good in Italy. 
And I like the Henley too, but it looks better on Leia Sidhu than it does on Daniel Craig. <laughs> wow, that's honest. I like that. <laughs> I love that. That's a great. That's Matt, a Matt. What do you What do you think? I mean, you're usually a little bit more stoic, but does it speak to you? Yeah. No, no, it doesn't. Doesn't really speak to me. Now, there. Um, I, I'm not a fan of Henleys. I, I had one when I was like 10 years old, and I haven't had one since. And it, it's just. It's, not for me, but you know, I I do like the the jacket in, in in some ways. I don't think it flatters Daniel Craig all that much. I don't. I think the uh, that slouchy fit, I'm, I'm not crazy about. Um, but but I there's something about it that I do like. I mean, I like I like a lot of the details. I like the pockets. I like the the, the material. Yeah. Um, I I think it it is a Bondian type of jacket. It's just the way that it fits him, the way he's wearing it doesn't speak like he speaks to me as bond yeah it's a good point because you know i know that these choices that we're talking about today the costume designer sidorat really chose them to give a point in time to tell a story around bond in what he wears in clothing but i think views from mark hey views from mark um has a really good point it it, it kind of seems out of left field but it's perfect for where he is in time. But let's think about some of the other fashion choices in Bond's history that was still point of time, but it didn't look out of the norm of what Bond would wear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, you know, one thing that this jacket actually reminds me of compared to something that Bond might have worn, that Bond wore in the past. Um, it, it in, in some way, reminds me of, of Roger Moore's powder blue um, leisure suit in Live and Let Die. Oh. Because... The jacket is a short style. jacket with with two pockets in the on the front, just like that one is. It's right. it's it's a it's a lightweight jacket, um, you know, and it, it's just it seem they both seem like things that we're not used to seeing Bond wear. Um, I love that. And by the way, Nicholas Slayton says, uh, for example, the baggy torso feels off. Color is great. Perhaps if there was a strong collar, all of the two casual. Quantum of Solace jackets, it might be better. Yeah, it's when we yeah, get. I, know, I, Solace, I agree with that. Love story. Mm-hmm. What I do like, it's the uh, it's the last time we see Daniel Craig wearing the Aquaterra. Oh yes, good point. Really good point. All right, well, let's do this then. Um, we're going to have to go on. And by the way, if you see me playing with things, it's because Streamyard has new functionality. Yay me! Um, so I'm playing around a little bit here. So you're all part of the great experiment that we're doing. Um, but I think probably everybody can guess what's coming up next. We've got to talk about this, the Massimo Alba suit. And this has been, I will go out on a limb to say, this has been something, let me hold on, wait for it. This has been something that's been a little bit divisive. Um, some people didn't like it. Some people still don't like it. Some people grew to like it. So, Kyle, let's start with you. Love it? Hate it? Uh, You could put me in the category of grew to like it. I still don't see an occasion where I would need this suit because it's not formal enough to wear to a a wedding, a funeral, a business meeting, but it's it's several steps up from casual. So I don't see an occasion where it would fit into my wardrobe, Mm -hmm. but I, I like it on him, and I appreciate that James Bond takes the time to dress up for such a somber occasion. I mean, he knows that what he's doing has emotional significance. So his clothes reflect that. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, Dean, Dean's got a good point. The suit looks better without the tie. I actually agree. I think I agree. the tie with yeah, the button yeah. down, with the suit, yeah. with the suspenders, with, you know, the suede chuckas. It's just, it's a lot going on. But Matt... I'm- I'm not a fan of, of a tie with a button-down collar. It's too much of an American look for Bond. Yep. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I think Bond is – there's something that I – mean, Bond is trying to look kind of Italian here. Italians will also wear a tie with a button-down collar uh, in southern Italy. And, I mean, it's it's a kind of like a – it's a bit more of a trendier look in the past, you know, I don't know, a few decades. And I, 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 I don't know, but it, there's something about the whole look that doesn't really work for me. Yeah, it's um, I do like a lot of the pieces individually. I think the tie is really cool. I don't have the tie, but I have a pocket round version of the tie, the same material. It's it's a fantastic material that that Alexander Ulch designed. 
Um, but I, I would say that the button down collar is probably my least favorite part of this. Button down collars, I mean, I, I don't mind them. I think Roger Moore wore them well casually in a view to a kill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. By the way, but, Matt, what, yeah. do you agree? Um, I'd love to get your opinion on this, Matt. Um, Mike Poplowski, our own Mike Poplowski, Culture of Bond, says, I'm not a fan of this outfit. I would rather a Brosnan linen suit or a Lazenby light-colored suit. Agree? Oh, yeah. Yep. I, that, that, I think Mike is spot on there. I think that would have been perfect, much more you know, traditionally Bond. The, the material is, is a, it's an interesting material, this kind of, you know, this baby corduroy. But mm. it it's doesn't quite make sense to me. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't have the suit, but I've seen yours, David. I know, you know, it, it, it's it's a nice, like, spring weather suit. Maybe a little too heavy for summer. Is it fair uh, that you were intimate with my suit? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that. But it, it's, yeah, I, you know, I, I do think that... You it know, was maybe an the, 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 the jacket would probably work. I think it would work better with as not a suit. Maybe the, the trousers with a different jacket, the jacket with different trousers. Yeah. I think a whole full-on corduroy suit really doesn't seem very Bond-like to me. And It's a commitment. In, 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 in this context, even, I don't see why Bond would be wearing this suit. Yeah. It, it doesn't quite make sense. I think because even if Bond is a slightly different person than he was before, he would be wearing the kind of suits that he wore, wore before. But as Mike said, you know, he would be wearing maybe a linen suit. I, uh, I think that would be great. You yeah. know, with the tie like Lazenby, you know, that cream Lazenby suit, that would be great. But yeah. I would say that um, it almost looks like, you know, he's leaving her. She's in the sheets. I'll be right back. You know, please go figure out where we're going to go next. It looks like he's going to a local business meeting or something like that. It doesn't look like he's going to go visit a tomb. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but Luke, I may be way off on this. Maybe, maybe you dream of this outfit at night. Who knows? I mean, this is one that I, I know he definitely looks better in it than, than I would ever look in it. And, uh, I will agree with, um, I think Steve, somebody, Steve said, um, he's blending in with the local, you know, kind of style and that I agree with as well. Um, and it looks good in that backdrop. You know, I, there's not too many colors I think you can pull off in that surrounding, and um, I also agree that it looks better without the tie, which is a shame because that's a great tie and it's a really affordable tie too. Yeah, it's a beautiful tie. It is. Yeah. Well, it's funny too because a couple people are saying, um, uh, da, 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 Alex is saying, did it work for you in real life? I'll say this. I have worn it loads, as somebody just said, but I wear it with a darker shirt, not buttoned down, never a tie. And I love it that way. But when I... Matt, when you and I and Kyle were in the city with Harris and I wore it, I look back on those pictures and I kind of cringe. First of all, it feels a little cosplayish to me. Mm-hmm. And I, I have to say it's one of these outfits fully that doesn't feel like David Zeritsky. I mean, it feels yeah. like I'm, I'm miming an outfit from the film, if that makes sense. Well, throughout the day, you kept shedding pieces of it. Like, oh, this, <laughs> I remember. But now the jacket's gone. But mm-hmm. now the braces are gone. Like clearly, putting all of those pieces together didn't work for you. But they all work as individual pieces. Right. They they're all, every piece is good on its own in, in some way. I wouldn't. But I, I, I do agree that they're all. They don't work together. The braces are a very odd choice for this outfit. I don't understand why they are here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is really interesting. So Spretsatura, which I love that, um, says Massimo Alba also offers a navy version of this corduroy suit. Do you think you'd be more attractive? We'll do a real quick one. They're coming through, David. Oh, no, that's, oh, <laughs> you, you oh, can see the them in the back. <laughs> so, no, nah, well, you know, I, I navy... I don't think this would work any better in navy. You know, what I one thing I do like about the suit is how the color that you know that the sand color looks so nice in Matera. The mm-hmm. color is perfect. Mm-hmm. The, the I, I think uh, I I think the all the whole, all the colors of the outfit they look so nice in the scene, and that right. was something that I'm sure that 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 Suterat really paid close attention to. Luke, navy better? Yes, no. Yeah. Yeah, I would say yeah. Or in that particular scene or just in general? In the scene, no. You, in general, if yes. Was, if, if they came to you and said, you get a choice of colors. I'd say navy, yeah. Kyle? Uh, I'd probably go for a navy one. 
All right. By the way, we do take requests. AJ Marcus says, guys, do a watch check. Everybody. I'm going to get a lot of shit for this. Let's... Uh oh! Is that the infamous tag? It's the infamous tag. Oh, nice. I, I'll tell you later. Matt, what are you wearing? <laughs> my my Omega got got stuck under my cuff. That's okay. You keep it there, man. Um, yeah, a lot of controversy over this, but let's see where we go with this one because Luke, you're going to go first with this next outfit. Prepare for the warm shores of Jamaica. Oh, nice. Nice. What are we thinking? Um, you know, I, I actually really like this one because it just shows kind of a, a relaxed version of Bond that we've probably really never seen. Um, it is a little funny how they beat the hell out of that shirt for him. Um, but uh, and, and I have <laughs> heard some things about the shorts. I've heard some mixed reviews about the shorts, but I think he looks good in it. And I think it's, you know, I mean, it's more. It's probably the most um, I'm trying to think of the right word. It just makes the most sense. Like he's on, he's just sailing. Just nobody's around, you know, doesn't need to impress anybody. It's the most, it just makes the most sense for that. You know what I mean? He's not wearing like a $7,000 outfit sailing. So I think that makes sense. Yeah. And uh, you know, would you wear it? Um. Actually, I will say I have that shirt, and I don't like the neckline on that shirt. I really don't like how, you know, it's very, you know, I'm not a big fan of that. I like more of a crew neck. So, no, I would not. Wait, wait is the neckline too big? Is it like a too, it's too round? Yeah, it's like, like it, it just comes like way, you know, I need to be David Buff to wear that, not Luke, <laughs> you know, chunky. <laughs> oh. When 54 years old, you reach... Oh, I'm, I'm scared. I'm, I'm scared to see what I'll look at at 54. Like 54 years old, you're rich. Huh? Matthew. <laughs> that is good. Good. All right, Roger Moore, not Kyle. Kyle. <laughs> Kyle. He's got the face. <laughs> Kyle, um, I think you may have even worn this outfit, but what do you think? I have. I don't have the – well, I, I do have the watch and I have the glasses, and they're my favorite sunglasses from this movie, quite possibly my favorite sunglasses – period, that I own. Mm. Love them. Um, I've worn an outfit identical to this one to the beach several times. And from a practicality standpoint, James Bond is out fishing. You wear crappy, beat up, worn out clothes right. yes. when you go fishing because... That's the word I was looking for. Nine, nine times out of ten, you're going to take that shirt that you wore when you went fishing and throw it straight in the trash because it smells oh, like yeah. fish. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Matt, what do you think of the outfit? Now, Matt, I've seen you. This is usually your daily wear that you wear to work, right? <laughs> yeah, you can, you can spot me walking down the street in uh, New York City wearing this now. Right on so, Fifth Ave. Yeah, I, yeah it's, I think anyone who knows me would know that I would never dress like this. <laughs> I remember that um, what. That one interview when you you, you talked to me, David, when and you um, you 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 asked people, you know, if they. You know, to uh, you know, to, if if they ever spotted me in a T-shirt, to uh, let you know. I think I actually offered. You offered some money for that. You offered, I think a, I offered a reward. It wasn't a thousand. It could have been like five hundred dollars, but something um, like but that. It, yeah, it was. It was something like that, and I I think I've seen you. Well, definitely I've seen you in polos, but mm. a T-shirt. I mean, I don't mean to get too personal, but would you wear a T-shirt to bed? Yeah, that was my first thought. We need Shit, a rear, we need like a rear window apartment. situation here with Matt. Yeah, we need somebody to buy the apartment across the street. No, he doesn't even lock his doors. You could just go in. I do it all the time. <laughs> so I'll try yeah, that. I, I I I mean I'm, you know I, I the That's shirt funny. does make sense. The, the shirt does make comment. sense in this. It ma it makes sense in the in the uh, the context as Kyle said, but um in and. and I guess I, I was kind of thinking that you know a gray a gray crew neck T-shirt, something that Daniel Craig wore all the way back in uh, Casino Royale. Maybe this is supposed to be standing in for that same shirt, and that's why it so looks so beat up because he's been wearing it for fifteen years. Yeah, and like and, and it, it, this is the last time we saw the first time he wore it. Now this is the last time he wear he he wears it. And, you know whether or not maybe he threw it out after this. 
Yeah. Because you got all all stinky like fish. But, you know, I, I don't think it looks particularly good on him. Well, like, I, I, you know, I will say this, though. Um, so I'm going to defend this outfit because people like Dave Fugate says that whole outfit reminds me of the videos you see where dads put on short shorts and crop tops to embarrass their daughters. I've seen those TikToks. I'm not saying I've been a part of them, but um, I will say this. When you spend, you know, Jamaica, like any tropical island, gets very hot. And going back to what Kyle said, I'm going to be on his side of the island on this because that's all you want to wear. Like I brought a lot of nice clothes every time I've been to Jamaica and I wear them for the videos. But other than that, you want to wear the lightest and, and those OBTs are super light. You mm -hmm. want to wear light shorts and you don't care if your schmeckle is hanging out because everybody's relaxed there and they don't care about nudity, your wedding tackle, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I get it. And if you're living there like him and he's got his own private entrance to his house, this is a European gentleman. He doesn't care about, you know, things yeah. slipping out or, you know, wearing a polo on a boat. He's in full retirement mode. So yeah. I'm defending it. Yeah. Oh, but Josh you... here, here he goes. It's a retirement outfit. It's a retirement outfit. Who wants to wear a starchy stiff suit when they're sailing on a boat in the infinity of Jamaica? Have you met Matt Spazer? <laughs> <laughs> well, Matt, what would, what would you wear to go fishing? A polo. Okay. Yeah, I'd wear a polo. Probably an, an older polo, but for the last time. Yeah, but but not like I. I but I'm seeing Daniel Craig that picture that you that you had up for David. It he looks like. Dan, I don't know. He looks like he's let himself go. I mean, the next moment we see him taking a shower and he looks great. His body looks fantastic. But for some reason in this outfit, he looks like he has a gut. He looks. I, like... I agree. But who is he there to impress? Mm -hmm. The fish, the red snapper he caught? Because he's, isn't he there to impress us, the audience? No. <laughs> he doesn't even know you're there. Anyway, let's see. Let's see if Matt. By the way, I love this because if this was everybody going, I like it. This would be really boring. So, Matt, mm -hmm. keep it going, man. But, Matt, I'm going to hand this off to you first because okay. here we go. Because now we got something, hold on, with a collar. Tiny Bahama. Yeah. There it is. What, what, what do you think about this, Matt? You know, it's um, conceptually, I think it has some some great ideas. I, I think the shirt is perfect for Bond. I mean, the idea of a black, you know, uh, collared button shirt, I... You know, it, it reminds us of the Ocean Club shirt in Casino Royale. And um, I, I think at least like he looks well put together. So, you know, he hasn't fully lost his sense of fashion. But he's also dressing like ever, how everyone, all the old people in Florida dress. I go to Florida. I go walk. <laughs> he's, he's wearing exact. He's wearing. You know, he's, he's dressing in Florida brands. He's wearing Sperry's. He's wearing a Tommy Bahama shirt. Those are what, you know, what, what the, you know, the retired people in Florida wear. Now, did you like it? You know, Anne brings up a really good point. Total Casino Royale vibes. Luke, I want to go mm -hmm. to you for a second. Um, do you get Casino Royale vibes a la Ocean Club here? Or do you get more Naples, Florida type atmosphere? I get 100% Casino Royale because that's actually how, how I've worn it. I haven't worn it with jeans and... We've talked about this. I had the Navy one at first and it was a size too big. So that one I had long enough to wear to, of course, Matt, Florida last year. <laughs> and I will say somebody said it's too warm. It's not too warm. It's silk and it's, it is thin. So I, I wouldn't say it's too warm. Um, but once I did get the black one and in the right size, I've, I've worn it out here in Michigan in the fall with like nicer slacks and and nicer shoes exactly trying to replicate Casino Royale. So yeah, 100%. Nice. Kyle. I love this shirt. I, I like it so much. I actually own three at this point in all <laughs> different colors. Um, I like, I think it does belong uh, in a shoreside environment, Florida, um, Jamaica, the Bahamas, but I, I think it, he looks really good because this is something that's approachable, uh, but it's something that shows that James Bond hasn't completely let his standards slip. I'm also, I mean, I've been wearing Sperry's since I was old enough to tie shoes. So yeah, I, I, yeah. big shout out to the, to the Sperry's. I like them. I think the Sperry's make all the sense in the world. Um, with me, the only thing 
that is a slight disconnect, and, and I own them, is the Tom Ford jeans mm -hmm. because they are really thick. They're not these, you know how some mm. jeans have a lighter weight? These yep. are a heavyweight jean. Um, and I know they, they, they did it for the look because they're kind of weathered and the look looks good. Um, and they're not super, super tight on him, but there's something about it. I do like the fact that, you know, in this and the previous picture, you finally do get to see his watch, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of cool to see that he's still, you know, representing, you know, the, the brand that he liked even when he was in service. Yeah. Kind of cool. possibly something that he was issued in the military because it has the, um, the Ministry of Defense broad arrow on it. Do you think that could have been his uh, retirement watch? Oh, that's a good question. That's quite a retirement watch. Well, I don't know because he 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 was retired when he was wearing the Aqua Terra before. Good point. Ah, good point. Yeah, that's that's a good question. It, when did he make that switch? Sometime in the five years that we never saw when he was off doing his frolicking adventures in Jamaica. He probably he made a switch when a bigger play paid twenty five million to have. Three <laughs> <Right. races. laughs> yeah, or he bought it. He just went to the boutique and bought it. So he I went like to piggies. One. I will I will agree with Matt though it is it is an interesting choice in brand with mm -hmm. Tommy Bahama because I've made it a point every time I pass one to go in and look for that shirt and I've yet to ever find one in store and they don't have a single thing even slightly familiar to it in the mm -hmm. store. It is all retiree Florida. But with it's, that said funny, it is a, it? it is funny, but I mean at the same time you just have to appreciate more the design and and the material because and from that sense, it's it's a beautiful shirt. By the way, Connor yeah. Connor has a really good point. He goes, you know, guys, he can have more than one watch. That's what I was thinking too. I, you know, good point. All right, so so let's put the Tommy Bahamas in the cupboard because Bond gets on a boat, and then we've got a very McQueen outfit. And I'll I'll jump into this one first uh, because this this was one of the ones that pieces of this came late in the game. You know, we didn't get these right away. Um, I was able to get the barber jacket and then had it tailored from the original season. It was huge. You could have slept a, a, a family of five in it. It was monstrous. And then, of course, the Carhartt hat, which was just discovered not too long ago, paired with the Tom Ford jeans and the Sperry's and the watch. I have to say, and I'm going to uh, listen, I'll get I'll get flack for this. I don't care. I really like this outfit. This is this is an outfit that at first I was like, wow, it's so Steve McQueen and it's so dad Sunday afternoon has to go pick up more paint from Ace Hardware type outfit. <laughs> but I love the hat. It's one of the most comfortable hats I wear. I love the jacket. It repels water. It's lighter than the barber when I don't want to wear the barber on, you know, kind of a warmish day, you know, autumn or spring. So these have been ones, because I think about this, like what am I going to grab on the way out that become a part of David Zaritsky's wardrobe and not just Bonds? These have, these are flying high. So Kyle, talk to me about this outfit. It's a tremendous jacket. Um, I find it incredibly wearable when it's rainy but warm because it, it doesn't make you sweat, but it keeps you dry. I'm a big fan. The hat, I haven't really tried it yet. Um, just haven't had the opportunity, but... I'm open to it. I've already spoken about how much I love the sunglasses and the Sperry's, which the I'm not a paid spokesman for Sperry, but the um, the gold cup version that he's wearing oh. are so comfortable. They're almost mm -hmm. as comfortable as running shoes. And it's Worn lined in deer skin, so your your feet feel amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's like walking on a cloud. Oh. Um, so I, I, I do like this outfit, and it does harken back to another favorite film of mine, which is the uh, Thomas Crown Affair. <laughs> That comment was good. That comment was good. I wear it every time I sell it to, to Cuba. Same. <laughs> Same. Mr. Ed Swain is in the house. Yeah, nice. Luke, what do you think of this outfit? You're a fan. Um, Brienne and I, actually, my fiance and I, we actually share this jacket together when we go out. We kind of wear it like a bicycle made for two because it's so damn big. <laughs> did you get, did you get yeah, the new version? Down. What? Did you get the new version? I have the new version, yeah, the, the covert but yeah. it, it is still huge. So I need to get that tailored, but, and it's weird because it's, it's not, it seems like it's not evenly um, large, you know, it's like, it fits perfectly here, but the, the arms are huge. Um, so that I need to get tailored. The hat is very comfortable. 
and Dean said it's very tough. That is, it's it's a weird combination. It is tough and comfortable, which is crazy. It's like a soft, you know, but the, it's like kind of more of a of a flatter hat. You know, it's not like very tall. Um, but you know what? I do like the outfit. It's a, it's a you know something I never thought we'd see, but I do like it. It yeah. is odd to see Bond in a in a baseball cap. Mm -hmm. It's it very is. odd. There's only been one other time, and it was cut from the movie. Yeah, and David, I will say, since you said you had it, have you been walking in anywhere where there's wind and it's almost blown off your head? The hat? Yes. Not at all. See, it happens to me all the time. You know, so you can when, tighten it in the back. I don't know. Oh, if I've done it. that. I've well, I've even duct taped it to my damn head, and it still <laughs> does it. So, <laughs> with yeah. that said, if that's I, I don't know if it's just me, but it makes me think how how sturdy is that while sailing? I. I don't know. I mean, I've been in serious wind and no issues yet, but it could be the shape of your head, which is round. <laughs> it's because he's like, got the I, same I, I went skydiving yeah. with it on and it stayed on. Yeah. Matt, <laughs> save us from this. What do you think of this outfit? <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I like Barber. You, I can't fault Bond ever for wearing Barber, mm -hmm. but the, the cap I am really torn about. You know, it, I guess it has those McQueen vibes and it, it works in that sense and it works for him on, on the boat. But it's just so strange to see James Bond in a baseball cap and to see him wearing something from Carhartt. Carhartt is like, just seems like the, the opposite brand for Bond. Yeah. Does that, let me ask you a question, Matt. That's good because um, a couple people have said, uh, one gentleman said, you know, Bond would never wear anything made in China. I mean, good points. Um, does that bother you, even though obviously Siderat is not saying to herself, oh, my gosh, people are going to think it's Carhartt. I got to overthink no. it. Mm -hmm. Does that bother you when it's not like certain brands? Um, not not always. Uh, I think that I mean, in the, in the context of the film, Carhartt doesn't come up. It's it's not something that we look at as a Carhartt cap. You know, it's not it's not like the style of a Carhartt jacket, which you really cannot imagine Bond right. wearing. But but I think it is all it is is a baseball cap. That is it, and it's it's nothing more than that. But I, I think even then that seems like an American thing for Bond to be wearing. By the way, a lot of love for Luke and his head shape. Yeah, I don't know if that's sarcasm or maybe I should just leave. <laughs> no, they, I think it's an adoration thing because everybody has a normal shaped head. It's so nice to have a unique shaped one. <laughs> yeah. Well, if it's any consolation, I hate the way my head is shaped. So um, I want to say something, though, with kind of like what Matt said, um, when it comes to the brands, there was a point in time where everybody thought that hat was Barber and that circulated. And Ooh. then when we kind of pieced together that it wasn't on the show, um, of course, now I can't think of the name of the show, but Brunello Cuccinelli makes a hat very similar to that. So then I thought it might be that. Um, but I think some of the things we're seeing him wear are just him being retired, living in Jamaica, not having access to, you, you know, high end brands. You know what, though? Um, and I'm sure I'll get some shade for this. But when I think of Bond, even in retirement, I think of him as an English gentleman. Mm -hmm. I don't normally would think of an English gentleman in a baseball hat. Right. No. Right. Right. I mean, there's other hats. I could see him in a Panama hat, you know, a nice straw, you know, uh, lock and co Panama hat or something like that. But that's, that's a tough one. I mean, I like it because I'm as American as you can get, but um, yeah, it's just a thought here, but guess what? I've got good news. I've got good news. Because Bond goes from a very casual look, and we, we've already talked about this, but maybe we'll go in a little bit deeper, because in Cuba, he gets to wear his tuxedo again. And mm -hmm. uh, Kyle, why don't we start with you here? Um, you know, he wears it, he shoots the cuff. Excited? Not excited? I mean, I, what is there to say? It's, it's James Bond putting on black tie. It doesn't get more classic than that. And th not only black tie, but black tie for an action shootout scene, uh, I, I really can't knock it. Tom Ford makes some of the highest quality suits in the world, um, so there's really nothing to say negative about that either. So, yeah, I think this one is working for me. I love it. Matt, what are you thinking? Yeah, I mean, stylistically, I think it's spot on. 
um, it just has the classic Bond black tie look. It, it's got, I mean, he's got the gauntlet cuffs on the on the on the dinner jacket, and he has the cocktail cuffs on the shirt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I love that. Me too. I, I yep. wish the fit were better. You know, we we already talked about the fit in the gun barrel sequence, mm-hmm. where we really got a good look at at the silhouette and how the silhouette needs a bit of work. Um, and I mean, you don't can, you don't you don't really see the trousers and the uh, the Cuba scenes, but you do see you know the, the poor fit and the collar of of the jacket, and that's something that we see throughout all the tailored clothes in the film. Agreed, Luke. Um. Normally, that's not my favorite style of lapel. I've kind of strayed from that, but it actually looks fantastic on him. I don't know if it's something different about this one, but I just think it looks great. And and it for somehow that tuxedo seems to stand out amongst the crowd. Yeah, I will scene. say this: this tuxedo, when I had it in hand for a few weeks, um, it felt. And looked great. And I, I, I bring up the feel standpoint, and Matt always talks about this because it didn't feel constricting in any way. Um, my Skyfall one doesn't either because I've had it kind of tailored in such a way. But the tuxedo itself, it just has like a very great feel and movement to it. Very different feeling than some of the Spectre suits that I have mm-hmm. that feel just almost like a little bit more padding. And maybe the padding is exactly alike. And Matt, you could tell us. Otherwise, there's just something very classic about the shawl that I think would make almost anyone look good. Maybe not as good as Daniel Craig, but Matt, do you know if they've changed any of the structure of this tuxedo? As far as I know, they haven't. The it's still the same um, O'Connor model from Tom Ford. Hmm. Um, but maybe the if the fit, I don't know, but yeah, I mean it's if it's I actually I don't know. I mean if the fit was. If it, was, if, it, if it was the same size, I would have assumed it would have fit the same way. Right. Mm. That's a good right. point. That's a good I, point. But, I'm not sure. Well, I will tell you this, as we know, um, it's tough to wear a tuxedo everywhere, especially to work. It's got its place. I know, Luke, you're you're going to be getting married. You'll be buying a tuxedo soon. Um, by the way, what type of lapel are you getting for your wedding? I think I'll do probably the notch. That's more of my, just kind of traditional, more traditional. Well, that's not the most traditional, though. I, I feel like least just traditional. as of, as Michigan. of recent, yeah, 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 just maybe works best. But I, you know, usually with, I don't know, just the shawl. I mean, it's, that's the a tale as old as time for me when it comes to Bond, especially Daniel Craig. He just seems to look so good and everything. And then when I try it on, it's just not the same. So yeah. I just got to find what works for me. And usually it's kind okay. of a notch lapel. And you're right. It isn't It isn't the most traditional. But I, I, that's the one I've been seeing most when I've done my research. And I just think that might look the best. Yeah. By the way, this is the only Bond style vlog out there where the panelists don't fear quoting Beauty and the Beast. You said tail is all this time. And right? I like that too. Oh, that's, that's like one of my favorite phrases. And I watched it last night and I cried myself to sleep. Yeah, well, <laughs> Chip is a real uh, tearjerker. Anyway, um, Connell. Connell Song is all the time. All right. So we're going to move on because now we're going to hit an outfit that has only the controversy. It's a very loved outfit by many. But is it a Daniel Craig outfit? Or is it a James Bond outfit? Mm. And Matt, we're going to go to you first. <laughs> this, yeah, the uh, the blink and you miss it outfit. So the, <laughs> hey man, it's seven seconds. I think it was what, four. I think I, I counted. I think I, I counted. I think it was like fourteen, maybe. Yeah, I mean, the but well, I, I like the jacket. I think you know it definitely has a, a Daniel Craig kind of vibe. You know, it's that American workwear style. It's not a, it's not it's not James Bond. It is not what a British naval officer would wear, but it is um, definitely Daniel Craig, as as you asked. And I think um, I, I I you know I, I I like the jacket. I uh, I don't think the t shirt works so well. It makes him look like he's working at the garage, you know, as a mechanic. <laughs> he he's 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 at the garage to pick up his Aston Martin, but but um, I think. So. It's someone else's car, and he—he's the mechanic. He—he stole it. 
He's maybe doing a tune-up or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> now we find out he's stolen of course, all of his cars. Yeah. <laughs> of course, it is a it is a ninety-five dollar T-shirt. But um, AJ Marcus has a great point. It's a great outfit. It totally works. But it's Craig channeling Bond. Kyle, do you agree with that statement? I I do. I think that this is more of a Daniel Craig outfit than it is a James Bond outfit. However, I love the jacket and I love the jeans. I think just like Matt says. You know, a plain white T-shirt. Yes, it's a, it's a luxurious plain white T-shirt. This would have been an opportunity to throw that Tommy Bahama shirt back on or something just to to raise the bar a little bit. Uh, James Bond's standards are should be a little bit higher than just a plain white T-shirt. Um, and I kind of like it when Bond reuses the same pieces several times in a film. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, something like that. Raise it up a couple notches, but I love the jacket and I love the jeans. It's... 14 seconds it sold 14,000 jackets. Oh my gosh, no yeah. kidding. And exactly. Luke, Luke, I want to go to you because you know Robert Judge says, and he's not alone, so I don't want anybody picking on Robert. Bond should never wear jeans, nothing gentlemanly about it. And yet he wears them in Quantum of Solace, and nobody seemed to have issues with him wearing jeans. But people are really divisive on all right, Matt. Yeah. Um, <laughs> people are divisive. So Luke, you know, what do you think of the whole outfit? Uh, first, uh, Matt has no shame, and I love, I love that. I love that he's. You need to have him on blunt so. instruments. It's, it's one, yes, it's one absolutely, here. absolutely. I'm here. If I wasn't speaking my mind, you wouldn't have me here. Yeah, the, no, the blunt yes. instrument of them all. <laughs> yes, um, you know what? I I don't agree or disagree with that. I think it's mm -hmm. the, the quantum jeans, especially like the white. It's it's like a more elegant look. Mm -hmm. Where in this garage scene, it's yeah. it's just like a blue jean, you know. Well, no, so well there it, are the blue jeans at the end of Quantum. Right, right, but even then, it's like, you know, there's that those just maybe because they're all beat up or dusty or whatever. But this is just like he just bought them like 15 minutes before he put them <laughs> on. They just look like unworn, unwashed. Uh, you know what I mean? Just like brand yeah. new. That that kind of look I can agree with. I don't fully agree with the never wearing jeans thing, but there's something about the, like, I will say, I will admit the first time I saw what they were, especially, you know, once we saw the film, we can see him from behind. I was like, they look like dad jeans. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, 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 gotta, I gotta tell you. So as a dad, I have um, a chance. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> and trust me, I look for them. They don't have my size. I'd have them too, but they don't have my size. So, so agent Debonair says, do you think he stopped for this jacket after getting off the ship? Or did he bum it from a sailor? <laughs> and he laughs, but that's not a bad it's actually thing. Actually, not a bad idea. Yeah. So, so Sidorat has said all of the outfits that don't make complete sense of Bond. What she went into is her head is, what would he grab on the go? Almost steal and mm -hmm. take. And I could see him being in that dinghy, being rescued on that ship, mm -hmm. and saying like, "Hey, you know, I got a hundred bucks on me. Can I just take that jacket? Take that white T-shirt?" you know, those jeans and stuff like that, casual type stuff, and put it together. Of course, it would have to fit him perfectly. But I will say this. Um, personally, I love all the parts and pieces of this outfit. I love the boots. I love the jacket. That jacket is my most worn piece from this entire movie, bar none. Mm -hmm. So I, I do think, you know, from a... Because we always have to talk about, will these match your lifestyle? Will you gravitate them? The answer is yes for me. Yeah, but, you know, we have say, seen. To, go ahead, Matt. No, I was say so. We have seen Bond, you know, just grab random clothes throughout uh, the films. Yeah. You know, we see that in Quantum of Solace a few times. He grabs the perfect dinner suit, you know, the, the most Bondian dinner suit, the one and that the Tom Mm -hmm. Tom, yeah, and and he and he grabs the um, you know, the the uh, the was it the the Adidas the Adidas, yeah. the Adidas jacket and. That looks great on Bond. That is like something that you would imagine Bond that would just he would buy himself, but he just grabbed that one. I mean, even Roger Moore would grab things. He he grabbed a clown suit. He grabbed a uh, a gorilla suit. You know, very Bondian things. He, <laughs> are you saying Matt that we should bring clowns and gorilla outfits back? I think we should. I, I kind of wouldn't mind seeing Bond, you know, in a gorilla suit again. Yeah. I, I love I love gorilla suits. I think they're just one of the greatest. Things Matt, let me I ask you a question. I know you don't own the RGT jacket, but if you did, would you wear it? Yeah, I would wear this. I wouldn't wear it with a T-shirt, but no. um, I, I think I could I could wear it like over a Stuntsville polo. 
I think yeah. just it's good. versatile. It is very and, versatile. No, no, this is something that I, I, I would, I would wear. Yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. Well, I um, will say there are there are jeans and there are jeans. These are the latter. Wow. <laughs> I like that. I like that. There are, uh, when when Bond wears jeans, he wears jeans that are that fit him really well and that are extremely high quality. He's not the guy walking around wearing jeans hanging off his ass with seven holes in the knees. Right. So, and, and I, I will I say this like on jeans. Luke, if you were there when we, Kyle and, and a few others went to uh uh I was gonna say naked and afraid. <laughs> That's what I always call it too. I don't know. The why. jeans company, you would have walked <laughs> out with a pair. Oh, trust me, I would have. And like I said, I tried to, but they didn't have my size. <laughs> but it, I think it's I think they just maybe kind of like what Kyle said, they just look so you know, elevated that you're almost kind of like, are they like brand new? I just think yeah. maybe they needed to be a little beat up. And the, the one question I would have for Sudorat with the jacket is um, with it being either Daniel or Bond, we've seen that jacket in a lot of films now and, and a lot of celebrities wear it. Ryan Reynolds, yeah. I think Chris Evans has worn it. We've seen it in like Captain Marvel. It, was it like, this is kind of like a hot item or is it something she truly saw? All right. Bond so wearing. with that jacket, um, that is something that that they saw in a shop way before all those celebrities bought because it was right. the first season it came out. The other thing is they bought a lot of them because they were either scheduled or they did. They were supposed to um, do a fight scene by his garage. So there were supposed to be two people and he gets into a, a scuff and a fight. So they bought something like 16 two different sizes of that jacket. Yeah. And we've talked about this before too. The brand itself is incredible. It's a husband and wife, like you've said, it's a very Amazing. small operation. And uh, that, that aspect of it, I like a lot too. And everybody kept saying it's a bond thing. Now you can raise it like twice the price. And he goes, and they never that. Yep. by the way, help me guys, Maria Kelly. Oh, you know, Maria, Maria Kelly says Craig wore jeans and skyfall. I think people think the barber outfit, those are jeans. I mean, the corduroys. I mean, yeah, they're, yeah. they're technically a corduroy. Way. I thought maybe I thought maybe she was thinking about when he wears the uh, Menlo Levi's jacket, but those aren't jeans. No, they're, they're, no. Those, those are chinos. Those are the yeah, top the, the, chinos. The, top the, chinos. the Skyfall barber outfit. Those those look a lot like a like just like a Levi jean. It's I think like a lot a, of get confused. It's like it's like a jean cut for the corduroys. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Maria, be careful because they're great. I, mean, I, I like them. They look good. You're dealing with experts here. <laughs> is what we're saying. All right, all right. So let's wash everyone needs a hobby thought <laughs> off of us, Kyle. Um, by the way, cheers, everyone. Cheers. Hope everybody's enjoying. This is a happy hour. We're so the beer got refilled. Second, I, I'm going to need. How did that happen? I don't neck it like Bond Double O XL, but um, I can. <laughs> yeah. Good Lord. All right. So here we go. Here we go. We're going to get everybody's temperature on this. Matt, we are going to let you go first. Okay. It's going to be a Rorschach. He doesn't know what is coming. Or does he? I think I know. Yeah, yeah. that's what I expected. No surprise. The next okay. outfit in the what film. What are we thinking? No, I think conceptually it is great. The just seeing Bond once again in a uh, in a gray Glen check suit. I mean, I I love always love a good Glen check suit, you know, especially in uh, this this colors. And um, you know, and it's something that Craig's Bond has worn a few times before. We you know, from that recalls Connery. So it's like, I think to me, it's just like one of the the ultimate Bond suit. And uh, seeing him with the blue shirt. I'm oh, sorry. I know. I know. This one's the white. The white shirt and the, the blue tie. It just has. You know. It, re it reminds us of some of the outfits that Craig wore. Some of what Connery wore. So it, it just has that classic Bond look. And this time, we, the biggest difference is that he adds that uh, the, the the tie slide from Benson and Clegg. Mm -hmm. This is like this is this is the the different thing here. This, that I I don't like how high he wears it. I think it should be you know worn a bit lower so it's not um, competing with the pocket square is it too but, is it too linear is that what it is no it's just too high it should be it shouldn't be at the level of the pocket square it should be um it's probably i i i for that outfit i would probably put it 
around the height of the top button or a little higher. You know, you can't you can't see the top button on his suit, but I would that's where I would put it the top the top of the three buttons. Now I heard so that it, um, the tie clips. If you put it too far down, it it looks like it's dragging you down, especially on shorter people. Is that true? I, I don't think so. I, I think it's. Here it's just it's distracting when it's too high it's too it's distracting. I've seen, I've seen some people wear it even higher than this, but the point of it is is and one thing that Daniel Craig gets wrong here is that it's supposed to hold the tie to the shirt. This tie clip is just clip. It's just it's just a decoration onto his tie. It mm -hmm. should be clipping your tie to your shirt. So when you wear it a bit lower, it 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 serves a better purpose because your tie really is is cannot flap around. It can't. Yeah. Whereas, you know, if he bent over and, you know, the tie could just hang down a bit, quite a bit from where the clip is. So if you wear it, you're supposed to wear it lower so it keeps the tie in place. That, yeah, that's I the agree. whole point of this. By the way, Stephen Andrews um, asked, David, weren't you there for the filming of this scene? How did it look in person? I was there and it looked so amazing that this was the piece. I mean, everybody, when there's a Bond film and you want to just get one piece and you say, you know what, if I can get this one piece, I'd be happy and I won't get anything else. And you just lie to yourself, of course. Um, this was that piece. I wanted this suit because on the stuntmen, it looked great. On Craig, it looked great. So, um, yeah, to me, this suit, and I wore this all around for like some of the press events and things like that. It's also become very identifiable. If you walk through Burlington Arcade right now, this is him when he was pulling up, you know, the, the shooting the cuffs because Bond is back. Like to me, this was the suit that said Bond is back and he's back in action. Luke, um, you, you, I know the style of, of suit and the colors that you like. I would think this might appeal to you, but what do you think? It, it definitely does. You can never go wrong with the Prince of Wales. I, I'll tell you that right now. I love the way this one looks and um, the Crockett and Jones shoes. I, I, you took the words out of my mouth. Bond is back. And, uh, you know, this is that English gentleman. This is the Savile Row you know, I'm back and I'm dressing to the nines and I'm going to go tell M he's a dick. <laughs> so, yeah, he's going to do it in style. But and of course, I will say all the Tom Ford ties from this movie. I love too, especially yeah. this one I have in particular. And uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've always gravitated towards these colors. You are right. You know me so well, David. Um, what, but yeah, it's the only Tom Ford tie in this film, isn't it? Isn't it? And did it end up being the only Tom Ford tie? Yeah, there's the bow tie too. Oh, the bow tie also from Tom. That They're, one is Spectre Tom and Ford? Tom Spectre and No Time to Die. Tom Ford ties all blend to me. They're all very similar. Yeah. They are. Yeah, they're very similar. Yeah, but Kyle, yeah. fan, huge fan. Um, I think you guys nailed it. This is when Bond comes out of retirement and says, "You know what? Now I'm James Bond again." Yeah, I was, you know, some guy whose name happened to be James Bond, but now he is quote. James Bond uh, going back to work at his high standards. He looks a little bit like Sterling Archer with the uh, with the tie slide, but you know, <laughs> uh, I'll let it go. Um, I think Matt's right. It should be a couple of couple of inches lower. I'm also not a huge fan of the tab collar shirt. I think that might be a little too fussy for James Bond, or at least oh, yeah. for Ian Fleming's James Bond. But um, that's a, a really, really minor quibble because this is my favorite look in No Time to Die. It's that's like more of an I think that's more of an M collar than a yeah. Bond collar. Yeah, it's a, it's a little it's a little busy. It's a little fussy. It's one extra step. And Bond is the guy on the go. He he needs to get dressed quickly. Um, he wouldn't go for that one extra step. Yeah. But um, but I, I love it. I think it this is the iconic No Time to Die look, and it's quite frankly the iconic james bond look a, a gray a gray glenn check suit and a blue tie yeah two thumbs up yeah so, so matt we've got a question it's asked of me but i think you're better to answer it robert judge says david what is the collar type called for this shirt craig seems to like the type of collar hey, doesn't it? well i think kyle just said it it's a tab collar yeah <laughs> oh. the tab collar. yeah but you're assuming i'm paying attention to everything <laughs> Oh, guys, I'm trying to run a freaking yeah. show here. What we know, I do like. I do like that the collar has returned from from Skyfall, so it shows some consistency yeah. with Craig's films. I, I appreciate consistency amongst the films in, in any way, even if it's something I don't mm -hmm. like. I agree with Kyle about it, but 
it, it, I kind of like that it, it has returned. It's yep. something that Bond would have already owned. All right. All right. Yeah. Good point. All right. All right. I'll tell you what. We're going to play a little game. Yeah, you didn't expect it around the top of the hour to play a game, but here we go. Nice. Okay, so, Luke, we're going to start with you. Just give so, Kyle the trophy. Luke, I need you to Kyle pay always wins. This is important. <laughs> Brady. It, it's, it's not Roger Moore impressions. So, here we go. Luke, you get a phone call. Mm-hmm. Brian goes, don't put me on. I don't have makeup. No, you get a phone call. And it's none other than the managing director of Tom Ford. It says, we love your content, raw as it is. And uh, you know something? <laughs> We're going to give you gratis from no time to die either the suit that you just saw or this suit. Which one do you choose and why? I would choose the the um, the Prince of Wales, and I would say I think it's one of those I think ones. Both w- Prince of Wales. Both Prince of Wales. Yeah, right. Oh, they are. So one is Navy. Damn it, dude! You know what I mean? Okay. Well, this is why, and we've talked about this before, and you've mentioned it a lot, David and Kyle. You actually did recently when we did um, the thing with uh, Connor. But mm-hmm. it's one of those ones where I think if you see it in person, the Prince of Wales stands out a lot more on the light gray than the dark gray. So that would be I would why I would choose it, just because you've got that pattern in there, and it's such a nice pattern. It's so well done. You want people to be able to notice it, even if they're not right in your face. That's why I would choose it. And I like the contrast with the tie. I think it's easier to do a contrast with colors with the lighter gray than the dark. Nice. I, I think that's a solid defense. Kyle, same call. What do you go? Uh, absolutely the gray Prince of Wales suit, but it's for an even more practical reason. Um, it's because I already own the Mexico City Prince of Wales suit from Spectre, which to me is just too similar to this suit that he's wearing here. So I don't I don't need this suit, but the gray suit would fit a void in my wardrobe. Isn't the Spectre one more of a, a window pane? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's it's a it's a blue Prince of Wales, and it has that that light blue uh, window pane over check. But it's still I don't I don't need another blue suit, but I could use another gray suit. All right, it's on its way. All now, right, same question. <laughs> Forty two regular. You no, know, you know I would also choose the uh, the gray one over the blue one. I I like them both. I like the both fabrics, but the gray one is a is a more traditional version of it. The blue, the blue one is a is an uh, it's a it's a it's slightly unusual uh, um, version of the pattern. So I, I kind of always go for the more traditional ones. The uh, uh, but um, also I think the I don't know I think the the blue one looks a little it, it looks a bit dull for. a for what I like in the blue suit. I think the way it's, it's like a blue and black. Although I, I do like that it has silk in the fabric. I like that. By the way, you all had really good defense and enjoy your packages. Surprise. Yeah. Be, Thank so you yeah. so much. Hold but you breath. know what? I, I think in the context of the film, I actually prefer the blue one. I, I like seeing the blue one on Daniel Craig more. The blue one I, looks I, good. I, I like the outfit yeah. overall. I yeah. like blue shirts oh, on Daniel Craig. It's a great suit. Yeah, I'm, I'm not crazy. That, Matt. I think on Daniel Craig, I, I agree. I think the blue does look more flattering. Blue yeah. shirts are much better for him as well. I think this, I like seeing the, I, I, um, white shirts on Daniel Craig don't work for me usually. Yeah. I think his, his, with his lighter complexion, yep. they, mm-hmm. they just, they kind of, they tend to wash him out. The blue shirts really bring out his blue eyes. Yeah. Um, By the way, I, I'm very impressed. An hour and eight minutes in, somebody just asked, are we talking no time to die outfits? <laughs> no, sir. Uh, no, sir. Gorillas, just, this is just a rum tasting. Yeah. And, and by yeah, the way, that the actually runs the tower at an airport. So we're all in trouble. Don't travel. Uh, yes, exactly. Rum tasting. All right. So here's the deal. We just went for something too very buttoned up, Bond is on a mission outfits to potentially something that he grabs on the go. So we've got to talk about this. He's got the Connolly shirt. He's got the Massimo Alba. He's got the uh, Barton Pereira sunglasses. He's got the Massimo Alba cords. And I believe he's got the Moulton Crockett and Jones somewhere hidden in there. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Kyle, let's start with you. As, as a whole, talk to me, but also the parts and pieces. Okay. Um, as a whole, I like it. I'm not in love with it. I think he looks good in it. But where I struggle with this outfit is I don't see myself, and it's kind of uh, similar to the corduroy suit, I don't see myself in a situation where I need that coat, a coat <laughs> that's not an overcoat. It's a light coat but it's not a water repellent raincoat either. So I, I, I don't really see the need for it. I think it's a missed opportunity for them to have brought back either the Skyfall barber jacket or to just reuse the RGT. Mm -hmm. But I'm not Daniel Craig. I think he looks like a million dollars. I think some of the other pieces, the, the shirt it looks good on him. The shoes are amazing. Uh, the sunglasses are great. So I can't, say too much negative about it other than that from a practicality standpoint or from you know my own personal biases my own personal wardrobe i don't need it yeah and, and by the way kyle um uh, most people i mean look at this it looks like you should be on the forest moon of endor hey yeah it's me i i think that that was actually a, <laughs> a, a pretty overt um influence on this because th there are had to have been there are a couple of moments in this movie, especially when he's when he's fighting the guys in the forest later on in the next scene. Uh, that's that is so Return of the Jedi, and even some of Daniel Craig's lines remind me of Han Solo. Like you know, I know, I yeah. know. That's such a Han Solo line. <laughs> yeah. So I think I do think that that was uh, an overt influence for sure. All right, so Matt, um, let's same question taken as a whole, but also talk about the individual pieces. Is there anything that you would put in your closet. Yeah, you know, uh, I do agree with many of what of, of Kyle's opinions on this. I, I think it's uh, I, I like I like how the outfit looks in the film. I think the the long coat you know makes it look very dramatic. You know, the fights when he's he's fighting in this coat, he look, he look, looks very dramatic. Um, but at the same time, I think it's I think you know. Kyle would have said, you know, saying about the, the RGT jacket or the barber, those would have been a lot more practical in this fight. And he, there's no reason why he couldn't have just grabbed either one of those. Maybe the barber is probably stuck somewhere. Probably he probably threw that away up in Scotland. But <laughs> the, uh, he probably, the RGT probably should have been in this instead. Now, I, I do like the shirt. Mm -hmm. I like how this, um, you know the with the the uh, the Finnemore, uh, for Connolly shirt is um, it, it's kind of putting putting Bond in in a nice button up shirt in a more casual context something that like Roger Moore often did it's the way that I I often wear clothes and uh, if I already didn't have a beige shirt like like the one from Live and Let Die I I might want something like this yeah well it's funny too because. The, the shirt itself is a gorgeous shirt. Um, I love when he takes off the jacket when he's inside Madeline's home mm -hmm. and the jacket isn't there. Um, and again, I own every single piece in this outfit. However, I've worn each of the pieces separately because he's got brown shoes, the black cords, the linen, all these things. I will go on a limb and I actually really like the company and people, but I own the trench coat and I have not worn it outside in the human world. Mm. I just will <laughs> never find an opportunity to, uh, even in the streets of New York where fashion reigns supreme, I, there were so many other choices. Like if he had shown up in, in that shirt, but with a Barracuda jacket, you know, a Harrington jacket on, oh, yeah. the, the internet would have exploded. You would break the internet. Yeah. But this is just, it, it's cowboys and aliens meets mm -hmm. Polo, and it, it just seems far-fetched. But Luke, you may be the ones, like Holdout, who says, love at first sight. Sorry. <laughs> I, it, it, it's Han's the, outfit, not Luke's. Yeah, it yeah. is. It, it, when you said oh. that, too, like, I feel like, yeah, That's nice, good. nice. I feel like the location, Scott, was like, Daniel, what do you think of this place? He's like, is that where they filmed the Endor scenes? And he's like, I got this great idea. Um, I, it, it is another one of those that looks great on him. Um, and I don't, I really don't mind the duster. It, it just is something personally, I would never have a place to wear it. And, um, you know, the Connolly Finnemore shirt is incredible and the Moltons are incredible, but, uh, 
yeah, my only issue with it is just from a sartorial standpoint, um, the duster, I would, I would never have a place for it. Yeah. All right. I've been Can we talk on. just a second about brown shoes with black pants? Normally, <laughs> normally it doesn't work. Here, it, it looks okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know what Matt thinks. I don't know. I, I think, I think brown pants should have been the thing here, not black. Um, because, I mean, or, or, or he could have worn some black boots. There are lots of great black boot choices out there. Very you Actually, know, rugged, blue, rugged right, black as boots. As it sounds, I think blue cords would have looked good here with the yeah. light colored shirt and the brown boots. Yeah, but blue, blue cords often stand out a lot. Matt, I, 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 wore, I wore them yesterday. I wore blue cords <laughs> yesterday. I'm wearing not, brown cords today. You're not picking you up. You're on mute. Can you hear me, man? <laughs> I can't. How do you feel about corduroy on top of corduroy in two different colors? Ugh, is it in sizes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so were these, were the two, are the two corduroys the same? They're the, they're the same baby corduroy, aren't they? I, I believe so. I would hope so. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. They're slightly different. different. They are different. They are slightly different. Yeah, yeah. So the jacket is a lit, it's just a, a hair finer. Like mm. one is baby and one is premature baby uh, cord. <laughs> I mean, it's just a little thin. I, I, I feel I, like, or are we live? I, I right. think I think corduroy and on corduroy doesn't work for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm I'm with you. So let us segue because does this get any better? So keep keep the black corduroys in mind. Keep the Moultons in mind. Keep the watch in mind. Now put a rag and bone Henley on top of those corduroys. Kyle, does it improve? Yeah, it, this is uh, this is working for me. I mean, it, it's uh, this is kind of how I would look on a Sunday morning, you know, after I've just made my coffee and I'm gonna settle in and watch a Bond movie. So yeah, this uh, this is working. Yeah, I've got to say, I I bought this because of the movie. I find myself, God help me, I find myself, and I, I know probably to Matt, I look like someone mining for gold in you know 1834 California. <laughs> but I find myself going, it is so Looks like a 49er, and putting it under like a jacket or something like that. It just, I be, I hate to say it, I become a Henley person. But Luke, mm. you know, what do you think? So Matt said earlier he had a Henley when he was a kid. I was the opposite. I hated them until this so david i think i'm i'm with you there i i it's just rag and bones great the materials it's it is very soft and they've made it where it just kind of fits you know you don't have to touch anything you don't have to tailor anything it just right off the rack it looks good and it is like a grab and go and it looks it looks good layered with things you yeah. know that's a big thing for me so yeah i love this i but, love this look but i will say this and this is going to segue into matt's opinion of this i <laughs> don't see this as a bond shirt well yes and no i'm uh, not to jump uh in front of matt but he he just rolled out of bed so yeah he's gonna throw on an undershirt yeah and and leia wasn't wearing this that's true so he had she the option to put it. this one on princess she didn't leia? probably look better in this princess, one too. princess leia. say do madeline <laughs> madeline was not wearing i mean we can stick with the star wars theme if you'd like we're, we're well, off of it well exactly. you know back 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 to the star wars theme didn't didn't you know han solo's shirt his 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 off-white shirt didn't have a collar so when, when I see Daniel Craig back out in Endor with this shirt on, he looks, <laughs> like, he looks really even cool. more like Han Solo. So I, man, I think I actually wear this shirt. No, I wouldn't. I, I think I wore it when I was a kid because I wanted to be more like Han Solo with the shirt that opened at the neck and didn't have a collar. Mm -hmm. Fair. Not He's even pajamas. wildly prepared. <laughs> we're we're really going down the nostalgic route of uh, thinking. Yeah. This. And by the way, I'll just I'll ask this question maybe as a you know kind of a I don't know glutton for punishment. But does the jacket, does the Massimo Albert jacket get any better when it's paired with this shirt than the last one? No, <laughs> I think it's the same. I think just changing. No. I don't. I don't think the. I don't think the the shirt really does much to to change the outfit. Yeah, I think it does. I think it does. I think it looks uh, less Star Wars with it on. I just. I think he looks like a badass in it, 
And, you know, whether it looks like Bond or not, that's definitely up for debate. But I think he looks great in it. I think he looks great in it. But again, it's going back to what I said earlier. I don't see a situation where I would need this jacket. I just. It, oh, yeah, that. Yeah, that hasn't changed. That hasn't yeah. changed. And, and Bond doesn't need it either. He could have worn the RGT jacket here. He right. Yeah, done, right. He's this, done a this, better this job. Yeah, I just think, better, it would have been better for this. See, yeah, even if I had coat this, does look nice. Right, right. If I had that coat, I would wear it more with the RGT than with the Connolly. I think. Yeah. All right. All right. All fair. Or with the rag and so, so now we've got to go with an outfit, Matt. You've talked about. Everybody's talked about this, of course, um, because it's been so visual, uh, tied to an official brand, no less. But also the outfit that arguably Bond wears the longest. I would say in the film, and that is his commando look. And Kyle, we're going to start with yours because I think you were such a fan that you wound up getting this for family members too. I did. I, I bought one for myself, liked it so much. I bought it for my dad for his birthday. Um, I love tactical James Bond. I mean, it's something Ian Fleming has Bond wear, very tactical clothing. Uh, I'm a huge Pierce Brosnan fan. Pierce Brosnan wore tactical clothing all the time. Mm-hmm. And this is a way that synthesizes tactical military attire with James Bond. He's wearing something tactical, but he's also wearing something luxurious for men peel. I, I love it. I think it's I think it's terrific. This is what a British Navy officer would wear into battle. Nice. Yep. And by the way, Kyle, do you like... I mean, we're talking about, you're talking about the sweater. Um, forget about uh, the rag and bone. Pants, boots. I mean, do you like it all? Um, in the in the context of the film, absolutely. I think this is, this is perfect. This is tactical James Bond. This is his uh, military roots coming back. And um, he's, he's dressing for a mission. So yeah, he should put on something that's functional and... Um, and militaristic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Luke, what do you, what do you think about it? I completely agree with Kyle. I also didn't know Kyle, for some reason, I thought you didn't like this one. Oh no, thought, I'm a big fan. Yeah. I, I was afraid of it. You're, you you're confusing me with, uh, with, uh, Connor, my fellow persuader. Yeah. And with, I know the Connolly, the jacket I have on right now, isn't your favorite. I know that much. Yeah. That's not my favorite. Yeah, we I know you're, you're online, King Connolly, but, but you know, well, <laughs> King I mean, Connolly. Connolly. <laughs> Not after I did the review and they and they messaged me and lampooned me for it. Um, yeah, this was one where I was. It was actually similar to this jacket, though. I needed to see more of it, and once I saw the film, I was like, I do want to get it. And then I was afraid, just with how it would fit, and you know, it's very slim fitting too, and um, and the and the neckline. It's just, it's a scary thing, but you know, I've, I've played with different ways to wear it and finally found the one I like. And yeah, and I, I love this and Kyle, you're right. This is something he would have wore when he was younger in the Navy and then found a way to get an elevated version. Yeah. I think this is, it. this is the one piece that if you were to only get one piece from no time to die, it would be this sweater. Mm -hmm. So, so Luke, let me ask you a question based on what you just said. Um, would you invest in the pants? I mean, MPL offers the pants as well, since you like the whole outfit. And follow up to that, would you wear them together? Um, I'm I'm with Kyle on that too. I wouldn't get the pants. And I think this is the number one outfit from the film that if you wore it head to toe, would probably look the most cosplay. Mm-hmm. You know, probably because it's the most... You know, it's not a suit. It's not, you know, something business casual. But yeah, I think altogether it's a little too cosplay. And then from, you know, like a practicality standpoint, I, in my life, I wouldn't have anywhere to wear the pants or even the boots, to be honest with you. I'll tell you where I would wear these pants. Um, I think they would be really useful for um, a snowstorm or Mm -hmm. they'd be really useful for any sort of like labor um, so I'm, I'm not opposed to them, but like you said, I don't think I would combine the sweater with the pants cause it would just look you, like I'm playing dress up as James you, Bond. You want to right? know something? So Danielle has the pants in her size. I have the pants. She looks Danielle wears better than I do. Women look so good in those pants. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it just unbelievable. But Matt, um, uh-huh. I want your opinion. However, 
I want to bounce off somebody's question. So young mentality says the no time to die naval outfit is something I can see all six bond actors where agree or disagree. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. I think mm -hmm. it's, it's an, you know, I mean, this kind of sweater, I think was it dates back to like world war two, I believe the, uh, the woolly pulley. I mean, this is a different version of it. Yep. But I, I think, you know, so it is something that James Bond, you know, you know, Ian Fleming's Bond could have even have worn. Mm -hmm. like I, I, I'm, so I, you know, I, I like I like that this uh, sweater is designed with a lot of history in mind. Mm -hmm. Who do you think it would have um, looked best on aside from Daniel Craig? Uh, probably George. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I would say yeah. Sean. Yeah, and I would, yeah, I would say Pierce. Say wow. Pierce. Yeah, I mean, they wow. all put him. I think that it's, I, I think because it is such, has so much history in the, you know, in that inspired this, this, um, this look. It's it's a really it's really a great one. Um, you, you, now, you know what I like about this too, Matt is, um, and I, I should have called this out in the beginning. I did not do this on purpose, but we're getting a purview of things even from an age standpoint. So you've got Luke, who's you know still in his twenties. You've got Kyle, who's in his thirties. You've got Matt, who's in his forties, and you got me. <laughs> and we we're all representing like different age groups, which is amazing. I'm in my forties. Did I get that right? <laughs> Kyle and I are, are only born a few days apart. We're, we, Matt, were born, who, we were born the same you? week. <laughs> and I and also just sure? turned 30. <laughs> Luke, you just turned 30? In October, yeah. Yeah, but that doesn't count. You're still like in your 20s. Oh, well, thank you. I like to yeah. think so. And so, Matt, how old are you? I, I am 34. All right. So you've, you've lived a tough life. We, like, we were literally <laughs> born the exact same week. <laughs> I'm going to move on to the next one because <laughs> my question is, it, once he gives Dudu, once he gives Mathilde um, the, the sweater, the outfit does transform a little bit. And some people have called it um, a miner's outfit. Again, gold mining. Some people <laughs> called it farming. Um, how do we like this? This is a transformational moment. But Matt, does the outfit become a little less bond to you? Well, I think, yeah, with, without that um, classic British sweater look, I think Bond looks, you know, I mean, yeah, I, I could definitely see the minor with the, the Henley. Now, is, is, is this, this is the same Henley he was wearing before, right? With oh, it the, is. He uh, keeps his sleeve shirt on throughout the rest of the movie until... Yeah, he, this, this, this Henley follows Bond through more of this film than any other look, probably might even be on have more screen time than any other item in, in any Bond film. I mean, except the watch. Except right. for some of the watches or right. maybe some of Sean Connery's ties. But um I mean or the yeah, I, I think I you know I I've noticed in the comments that a lot of people have been talking about the braces. Mm -hmm. I, I think that they do work. You know, you don't want your trousers falling off at this kind of moment and uh, nothing will keep them up better than braces will. You know, yeah. he, he needs he needs that security right now. And uh, it, I'm sure they make Bond feel very secure. Dude, I, I have those pants. Those pants are like cinched to you. And by the way, I went, when I was talking to Sidorot and I said, this is the movie where Bond, it's, it's like suspenders and sunglasses and sunglasses and suspenders. <laughs> and she even agreed that that was Daniel Craig. Like he loves him suspenders and he loves glasses. But this he is says, interesting. They, yeah. Uh, Nick Nicholas Slayton says, this is weird to say, but it works, but only when he's got a machine gun. What do you think about that, Kyle? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I could kind of see that. It, it, the look makes sense to me <clears throat> that he's he's taken off his sweater and has his undershirt on. So, yeah, th I think that makes sense. Uh, as far as the machine gun adding any sort of verisimilitude to it, Okay, maybe that makes him look a little bit more militaristic and a little bit more macho. I'm right. fine with that. Um, I just don't. I mean, are, are there no? I mean, the, the army certainly has belts. I, I don't see. Uh, I don't see <laughs> for the suspenders, but that's fine. It, it it looks fine. You know, he 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 took off his sweater and is fighting in his undershirt. I'm okay with it. Yeah. 
Uh, he looks as surprised as everybody else. Yeah. But, but <laughs> Say, bring my sweater back. <laughs> yeah. He's like, is, is, is she still wearing that? Um, Luke, you know, the other thing we've got to come to terms with, as you give me your opinion on this, is this is, out of the entire Daniel Craig arc, the, 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 the bond we've been living with for 15, 16 years, this is the outfit that he dies in. This is mm-hmm. Bond's death outfit. Yeah. What about that? Damn. I, By the way, check out the missile question. going right into the hole. In yeah, that. yeah. Um, I mean, you had to, that's a tough question. I, you know, I'm curious too, like when we talked about this, this shirt earlier, <laughs> Kyle needs his, he needs his support. Need my, he oh, needs his support. It was an emotional moment and I need my doo-doo. Yeah. <laughs> um, when we talked about the shirt earlier, I can see how it's not, you know, your typical Bond shirt. I think now it makes more sense because it's used as an undershirt. Um, with it being the last outfit in the entire series, I mean, or I should say Craig series, it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it fits what he's doing. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I don't think I could see him dying in a tuxedo. So, By the yeah, way, Bobby I, Morelli, yeah. this is a Florida flea market look, suspenders with a Henley. <laughs> it's a tough crowd it, it, it too, in florida you know you never know well that's the thing it's an it's it's all it always goes back to it he looks great in it and if you know if i showed up anywhere with it they'd be like where'd you piece this thing together at yeah all right well we are listen we've been here for an hour and a half so we've already blurred the lines of a happy hour we have one more look one more bond look that we'll talk about and then we're going to do something a little different, a little special that everybody in the chat room can be a part of. But before we do that, let us show the very last alpha. I want everybody's opinion on this. So Bob's- I knew you were going to do <laughs> I knew this. That was coming. I knew it. I was trying to think what he. Oh my god! I was trying to think what you would use, Dude. what image you would use. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is that is that is that wrong? Is that Tom <laughs> Ford? So funny enough. That is, and you can see in the upper left-hand hey, corner, Kyle. that's Rag and Bone combined with N. Peel, Danner. You can see Danner quite plainly in there. That's oh terrible. My oh, my yeah. gosh. You, first of all, I have just totally flipped out the, uh, yeah, everybody. The comments are. <laughs> it's, get, it's getting all philosophical now. You know, yeah. like, it doesn't matter how much wow, he went there. Clothes, it's yeah. all going to wind Look up in the ash pile. <laughs> I knew it was coming. I thought about like an hour ago. I was like, I can't, I'm trying to picture, is he going to do like guts oh, or something gray. at the end? Nice gray charcoal. It is a nice oh. shade of gray. It is a very nice shade that's, of gray. That's definitely yeah, that's charcoal great. gray. I if would they, take a suit. If they, uh, if they made the gray into like a Prince of Wales pattern, it really... <laughs> you did, oh Kyle, God. you literally... <laughs> I was literally going to say a Glenn <laughs> check Logan with that Ash. gray. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. That was just a, a little bit of levity. <laughs> we could keep going. I mean. <laughs> all right, so here's what I want to do, because this is how we're going to kind of end it. First of all, this is amazing. We went through the Bond outfits. We debated. Some of them we love. But I want to do something a little bit different. And Kyle, you're going to start. So imagine, if you will, that somebody says, look, you could alter, not that you ever would, you could alter this film and actually kill a piece of clothing. But you could also keep and highlight another piece of clothing. Which do you keep and highlight? Maybe something was too short. Maybe you want more of it. And which one do you like? You know what? That never worked for me. Which is your keep and which is your kill? Mm. Um, and you gentlemen can start thinking because you're next. <clears throat> Well, Luke, it's been nice being your friend, but yeah. I'm going to kill the uh, Connolly jacket. It's okay, I'll send it to wise. You. And uh, I, it just, it's its one of those things, again, maybe it looks good on Daniel Craig. I don't see a situation where I would need it. And Luke, come on. And, and, Luke. and Luke, oh, of course. Thank you, thank you. Don't. That's why on. I apologize to you first. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to keep uh, the RGT jacket. I think, mm. why isn't he wearing that? Instead of the duster, why isn't he wearing that instead of the Connolly? That should have just been James Bond's jacket. Yeah, nice. I like those choices. By the way, uh, some of the ones in the chat, Tiki Bond, kill the trench. 
keep the RGT. Uh, we got S. Trago saying more of the RGT. Uh, I love this one. But George says keep Anna de Armas's frock. Wasn't yeah. part of the choice, but there we go. Just uh, keep her in general. I yeah. love that. We got Alex Lama saying kill the duster, keep the commando outfit. So keep the comments George. coming in the chat as we go over to Luke. Same question. Oh, man. I was hoping to go to Matt. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I would, I'm going to say I'll kill the duster. And I would like to see more of, I don't know, it's his last film, The Tuxedo. I'll say keep the tuxedo. You got to give us the whys for each. Why are you getting So ready? the duster, I, I agree with what Matt had been saying. I think the RGT, you can kind of half give the keep to the RGT too because, you know, great jacket, 14 seconds on screen. I mean, and like we said about the sales and the brand and everything about it, um, just underutilized. And then... Um, to keep the tuxedo, it fits him great. It's, you know, he looks fantastic in it. And it's his final curtain call. So I would have liked to see him wear that way more than the final commando outfit. I think a lot of people agree on some things, disagree with others. Anne Rowe says, highlight the commando outfit, kill the trench. Uh, we've got Leah who says, kill the duster and keep the commando pants. That's kind of an interesting one. Uh, kill the Henley. Keep the duster from oh, Binford. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Red Velvet says keep the boat. <laughs> no, <laughs> Nobody wants to kill the hat yet. No. Keep the, uh, Craig Cornish says definitely keep the commando outfit and the gray suit. Lose the duster. More tucks from Mike Poplowski. Got That's a lot Mike. of them coming in. Uh, Nick Slayton says, kill the NTD wardrobe. Bring back the quantum. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'd be on board for that one. That's cheating. That's All right, cheating. Matt. So speaking but, of well, that. I, I think Nicholas Slayton is kind of spot on when he says uh, $5 says Matt kills the various T-shirts. Mm. Wow. Yeah, I think the T-shirts um, just don't look good. I think they look really bad on Daniel Craig, the one under the, the RGT and the one on the boat. I don't think they, I think they're just very unflattering looks. I don't like seeing Bond in those. So I would, um, either one of them can I'd be happy to, to go. Um, and even if Bond had to wear a Henley in, in, in those um, scenes, I'd take that over the t shirt. Nice. Mm. These are good reasons. By the way, I got some interesting ones. Burn the suspenders. Wh wh which uh, ones? <laughs> Again, I think oh, you need oh. all. <laughs> Views from Mark says, keep the duster, kill the baseball ball cap. Uh, glad they didn't go with a KC. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's funny. Did that's we get really a keep? Funny. Did we get a keep from Matt? Well, uh, I, I kind of, I guess, said just to replace those with the Henley, even oh, though I'm not okay. crazy about the Henley either. Yeah. Ladies who I, I would, like I would have added a polo shirt or something in instead of the Henley. Well, is it funny, funny the neckline you don't like? What? Sorry. Is it, is it the neckline you don't like yeah, on the t-shirts? Don't they don't look so good. I don't, mm. I don't, they look good. By the way, this is a, a nice segue into the final, final portion of this because this is where my my guests, my friends, the panelists get to flex their creativity. And Matt, we're going to start with you. So now that you've seen the movie, and we're going to do this with every movie. If you had if suddenly Sidorot said, hey, Matt, we, we want you in for a day. And based on what you know about the plot, you could dress Bond in anything that you wanted. You could replace the ratty T-shirt and shorts with a scuba outfit. It doesn't matter. What would you choose for Bond in this movie? What would you add? What would I add? I would say... Uh... I think, needs some, I think he needs some of the polo shirts that he wore in the previous films. Mm -hmm. um, I think with all, especially, back. yeah, with Sunspell polos were great. Or even the, the Tom Ford polos are great too. Yeah. Probably not quite as good as the Sunspell. I do like the Sunspell Riviera polo. I Me think too. that that would deserve to be back in this film. Um, I, I would, I would definitely do that. You know, That's for some of the choice. maybe some of the Jamaica scenes. Um, or even in Matera. And uh, I, I would also uh, probably just want to put Bond in uh, some, some better tailored suits. 
I, I think the concepts behind uh, the three Tom Ford suits are uh, are, are solid. The execution. Although, the execution mm -hmm. is what needs some help. I mean, although I would not have put Bond in two different Glenn check suits. Mm, yeah. I, I think there needs to be some variety in pattern, just wearing what is essentially the same pattern in two different colors makes the wardrobe not quite as interesting as it could be. You know, yeah. um, you know, Craig has him had a great striped suit in uh, Skyfall and Inspector. <laughs> and I think he could have used some of you know, I think, a, I think a striped suit would have been great for the, mm. you know, instead of the blue suit or even just a solid suit. Um, or, or then, then there was that, uh, the gray pinpoint melange suit that uh, Tom Ford had made. That, that would have also been a nice thing to add in. Mm -hmm. um, would also just not have uh, single vents on the suits. I I can't stand them. I think that Matt, you are I have double the entire vent. movie. <laughs> That's like, you know something? I would burn all the clothing in the he, warehouse and start a new. He, he likes the yeah. commando. He's given that. <laughs> the commando oh, is... The uh, I want to give ladies who bond. Th this is great because, you know... She didn't have a voice before, but skip the Jurassic Park outfit and bring the safari jacket back. Yeah, I'd be up for that. Safari jacket, I think, would have looked too. amazing. Luke, what are you doing, man? What are you adding to the movie? So I will, I will steal from Matt a little bit. The Sunspell Polo, one hundred percent. I just think, um, in in the Jamaica scenes, is you know, replace the Tommy Bahama with kind of like maybe just like a slightly more dressed up like especially when he's with felix a slightly more dressed up look yeah. that we see with lamarican once they're actually in there and he's just got the polo maybe like maybe a darker color with pants and stuff like that um i would bring back the skyfall barber jacket too mm. and then uh sorry kyle i was gonna say kyle and i can't do things together we steal each other's ideas the entire time um i had one more um Oh man, I may just have to leave it at those two, I guess. This is what happens know. when you turn 30. You you get these mental moments. I know, I know. By the way, the women really are are piping up with some good ones. So Mariah um says, I want to see Daniel Craig in a formal British. That would have been really movie. cool. That would have been really cool. Yeah. That would have been a geek out moment. Kyle, now that all yours have been stolen. Yeah, there's there's no more originality. So um I would have said the gray. Tom Ford suit that was not used in No Time to Die would be my first choice. I think we only get James Bond in two lounge suits in this movie and, and one dinner suit. So another suit certainly would uh, would be most welcome. Hurt, yeah. The other thing that I would have brought back, like Luke said, is the Skyfall barber jacket. Um, but he stole it from me. So I'll throw oh, in. No, you, you said it first before, Kyle. That's right. Ooh. Yeah. That's right. Thanks, Matt. So uh, that's true. I'll, I'll throw in. I love. I love it when Bond wears a leather jacket in uh, like a tactical mm -hmm. situation or a casual situation. Maybe he wears um, like um, s sort of like Roger Moore does to San Francisco City Hall mm -hmm. when he wears a leather jacket over his button-down shirt. Ooh. That's what he wears to uh, to Vesper's grave. You know, something that's still. It's not. A suit and tie look but it's still like a good okay i can see james bond wearing this he hasn't let his standards slip uh he's still looking buttoned up and professional uh, mm -hmm. so yeah i would throw a, a leather jacket on bond instead of the uh sloop suit yeah and kyle it's interesting when you said leather i immediately started thinking how much more i would like that in the norway scenes as opposed to a trench Mm -hmm. yeah. It's that yeah. type of environment and coolness that a leather jacket, but a leather jacket is badass out in the open. It gives you a little bit of protection. Yeah. yeah. But, the, the Armani okay. from Casino Royale. Yes. yes. Or I was going to say Brosnan's from Smart Ever Dies. Oh. I mean, that's so ooh, great. An awesome that, jacket. that might be a little too intense for that scene. That's true. And, uh, and that would be cool the, with the, the Armani one from Casino is a great jacket, too. Yeah. That's that true. Tomorrow Never Dies is one of my favorites. He could have worn that look from norway with the the connelly finnamore <laughs> with the rgt instead of the instead of the duster to vespers by the way site. john lennon who god love him has come i thought back. he died in 1980 yeah what's well, what is this but what? he's come back for the book club and he comes back for this and this is the only time people ever spot him but he has mic drop moments 
I thought Kyle was going to say the clown suit. <laughs> like I really, really did. <laughs> Wait till we get you know, to you, 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 yeah. you, you know, you know. I think, I think in the, the Norway scenes, I think that they put Daniel Craig in the, in the gorilla suit. The gorilla, yeah, that, fighting yeah. in the fighting in the gorilla yeah. suit. No one, no, they, the villains yeah. wouldn't oh know gosh. what. And then or you have Chewbacca's Diane Fossey, who does gorillas in the mist, come out yeah. and start to pick like insects off of his. Where are we going with this? This is terrible. <laughs> Some Jane I'm Goodall. Totally lost control. All right, lost control, <laughs> gentlemen. And people in the thread, thank you, thank you so much. This is officially kicked off this entire series. We had a great on a Tuesday night. This is a school night, and hundreds of people came out to join in the conversation. I want to thank Kyle, Luke, and Matt. You guys are amazing. We we come back for Spectre and other ones. Yes, sir. Oh yeah, thank Absolutely. you for having me. I'd love to. Yeah, come well, back. we're here's the thing. This is going to be a journey. It's going to be a real journey. We're going to do all of them. Uh, we're going to try to theme them. We'll have interesting conversations. But thanks to everybody that joined in the chat for the very first one. Uh, Vlad just told me it's 2, 2.45 a.m. and he stayed up for this. You're insane, Vlad. My gosh, thank you, Vlad. Go somebody now. It's yeah, time. thank you, Vlad. Did you quit your job? No, Vlad's just amazing like that. That's, you know, <laughs> but he also lives at night. So that is what he's about. That's true. Yeah, I've heard that about Vlad. Mm -hmm. It's true. But listen, everybody, um, thank you so much. And we will return with the Bond style happy hour inspector very soon. So until then, do do, right? <laughs> Take care, everybody. Cheers. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.